I just uh, celebrated my 85th birthday, and all of my all of my students down in uh, the Florida area, when they found out I was coming to Wagey Fest, they all got on the phone and said, "I'm going to come up there and help you out, George. You know, just in case, you know." So. I brought them along and I found something for them all to do. Normally in, in my seminars, and I've done quite a few of them, I don't talk much about the specifics of waging. In other words, you know, how you move rather than just the movements itself. And this is the way waging has been taught. That's the way I learned it. Put your hands here, elbows here, fingertips here, and now go. But in the process, all the students get tested. And this is the element that sort of uh, changed the, the way it, it was taught and the way that people understood your karate is supposed to be done. And hitting someone when you're standing in a static position like this, everybody has to tighten up, all right? And the way I learned it by Tamiyoshi and Weiji is that they prodded, they touched, and they were looking for muscle development, not necessarily how hard of a punch you could take. And this was something that I didn't really understand. However, in the many years that I've been doing it, many times I've been on Okinawa, I never heard an Okinawan master tell me, tighten up, get harder. It was always, here's the position, elbow here, and it was all a very technical matter. It wasn't like how hard you can make your body, because that's kind of artificial. And if you go through your training thinking that you're supposed to be doing everything very hard because that's the way you were tested, all right? I think you get kind of a wrong impression. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing isotomy type of exercises. That is where you, you focus all your muscles and you move. That's an exercise. In Goju, they claim that Sanchen is an exercise. And they do it that way, not because they're learning fighting techniques, but it's an exercise. And then they have other kata and they drills and other things that they do. Somehow or other, Weiji has sort of picked up a lot of that. Now on Okinawa, they do a lot of exchanging visits, picking up little things here and there. And the Weiji style has sort of become identified with being an armor-like exterior that can take massive blows, you can break things over your body, and it's become a, a style that that has become well known for that. And about 40 years ago, I started to, to analyze the movements of Sanchen, realizing that if all is in Sanchen, and that Sanchen is so important, then why should I be so tight during all these movements? <clears throat> because in an athletic activity, whether it be racing, um, running, boxing, all activities rely on stamina and on staying power. And if you are developing muscle memory based on dynamic tension, which by the way, back in the 50s, we all talked about dynamic tension of Charles Atlas, but that was exercise. Now, no one has ever talked about that. And I was a little, I'm actually very nervous about doing this, this seminar because a lot of people go through their life practicing San Chen like that. Great exercise. But meanwhile, all dojos on Okinawa have weights, they have jars that they use, they have these devices which you twist with weights pulling up. They have exercises that develop the muscles of Weiji. But the kata is designed for fighting. Now, if you never get into a fight, you never have any way of testing whether your Weiji works or not. 
So if you never are tested, then the tension, dynamic tension way of doing things is okay. All right, and you go through life that way. However, a lot of the people on Okinawa, the, the masters, are having strokes, they're having a lot of health problems. But the masters who do it, what I call the old way, the Nakahodos, the Kanai Weiji, the Tomoyoshi, have you ever seen them go through a kata like that? All their katas are smooth. And they, they emphasize those things that are important in fighting. I mean, that's what the style is for. I mean, why did you come to a Weiji Dojo? You wanted to learn how to fight or take, do self-defense, take care of yourself. You didn't come there necessarily just to do exercises. And if the first thing a teacher does is put you into a Sanchen position and start pounding on you, the first thing you have to do, because I don't care how great a shape you're in, unless you're a professional fighter. A professional fighter can go through five-minute round and be able to use the old way because his muscle structure is such that the, the muscle memory that he has, if someone's throwing a punch at them, they tighten up just for that instant that the punch is hitting them. They don't go constantly tense. So this is one of the things that no one's ever talked about. We sort of accept on blind faith that you do the, the sanction any way you want to. And of course, there are many ways of doing kata. There's many applications. And you go from dojo to dojo. Teachers put their own information into the, uh, into the way they teach. And nobody, you know, we come visit, we all are allowed to do whichever way we want. But, you know, as, as you know, at my age, I want to get the truth out there. And I want to let people know that maybe we should be talking about these things. All right, that maybe when you get to be 40, 50, that's not the time when you discover, I can't do kata that way anymore, and all of a sudden you start doing it in the old way. All right, and one of the things that, that got me when I was writing uh, the first book, or all the books, is that Tom Yossi's statement that Sushiwa would make Kanbun Weiji, when he first started, three months doing nothing but the opening movement of Sanchen. Now, why would he have you do that for three months? You know, there's no fighting involved in, in that. That maybe Sanchen had some other, other ways of teaching you some, the fighting method. Maybe there were some elements of Sanchen that perhaps were very important. And maybe a simple movement like that, he was teaching him just to allow your body to move, all right? And then as you got faster and faster, that movement accelerated and it became a fighting move. It became something that he could use. And that angle was important because all of your blocks start at that angle, all right? And why is the Waiuki important? Well, the Waiuki is a 360 degree block or intercepting move. However, as you go along, you learn that the block can start anywhere because your mind is not focusing on doing a dynamic tension movement that's so slow that it won't work. And that's what will come out under stress. You're not going to be able to move like that. You're gonna, the first thing you're going to do is tighten up and then move. And you've lost time. And you're really you're fighting yourself. You're fighting your own movements. It's great exercise, but at some point, you've got to do the exercises outside of your wagey. And you leave the wagey for fighting techniques. And plus, you're going to be able to do it a lot longer in life. It's, it really then becomes a lifetime activity. And as I pointed out earlier, in all the years that I've been training, I've never heard an Okinawan master tell you, you've got to get tighter, you've got to get harder. They've never said that, but they also have never said, maybe you should loosen up a little bit, <laughs> let your body go, let your body move. So that under stress, the first thing you, you do is tighten up, because that's, you, that's what the muscle memory is. Under stress, the first thing you do is you tighten up. 
You don't want to do that. A long distance runner, if he starts out, whether it be any athletic activity, you start off just doing it. And then as you do it, you want to go further. Now, how do you go further if you're a, a, a mile runner and you're going 26 miles of training for that? Do you lift weights? Do you want bigger muscles? Possibly, but if you want to survive 26 miles, eventually you have to learn to control your muscles so that your muscles are not fighting one another without you even knowing it. All right, and then through that process, you go two miles without tiring out, and eventually three miles. But all that time, you're not gaining more weight through building muscles, but you're learning by activating those muscles that are needed to perform that action. So it's a long-winded explanation of what I've been doing for 40 years and trying to get people through subtle things I, by making statements like, no one gets a stronger belly by punch someone punching at you. All right, that you develop muscles, you know, if you're gonna do it the, you know, with the uh, isotomic method, all right, get your muscles hard, that's fine, you know. That's Goju's way of doing it. And somewhere along the line, if you test a student at, when he starts, by hitting him, he's going to learn or she's going to learn that in order to take that blow without vomiting, you've got to tighten all your muscles to concentrate on that section where the punch is coming in. But if you're lifting weights and you're doing push-ups, exercising, which most people do, but if the only thing you did was your weiji kata, you're, you're going to build these same muscles, but it's a very slow process. And that's not the process by which they say it takes a lifetime to learn Weiji. Well, it takes a long time to learn the elements of Weiji that it was, in my mind, designed to accomplish. Now, whether these movements are accurate, correct, there's a lot of research that goes on, you know, the, you know who was Sushiwa and what was Kanbu saying, how was the Katas done? back uh, at the turn of the century, that kind of thing. But nobody talks about movement, which if, if karate is an athletic activity, then why shouldn't we be concerned about that? And I'm trying to think of a sensitive way to you know, broach the subject to all of you. But I felt that at 85 years of old, you'll forgive me if I make a jerk of myself by saying these things. Now, I, I, I'm going to have two of my students who came here and they wanted to bail me out in case I needed help. And I, I want them to go through what I consider to be a, a way of doing Sanshin that maybe 80%, 90% of the world is doing it that way. But if you go to Okinawa and you watch the old masters, and I watch Tamiyoshi do many, many kata, and I've never seen him do a hard kata. Everything was based on speed, even though the movements weren't necessarily very fast, but they were based on an accelerated movement that he looked really good as he was going through it. Weiji Sensei, when I was there the first time, he was in the prime of his life. He never did a hard kata. But the, all the young guys were out in the corner while he was teaching people kata and working with them and checking how the muscle development was going through the exercises that they were doing. What could these students, what was their stomach like? Here, touching. And if you all just stand there like that and just hit, touch yourself like that, that's natural strength. That's strength you've developed. It's not strength that doing this is building. So what they're trying to find out is how, how, is it, how is the training coming along? A little pushing here, arm movement. It wasn't, if I don't want my arms to move, I'm tightening them up. But he wasn't interested in that. He was making sure that the arm would return to that position. All right, but we misunderstand it. We think if someone hits you, you've got to tighten up in order to be strong enough not to, to fall prey to that punch. Someone comes up to you and starts punching you, 
You're going to tighten up and you're going to begin to believe that's what they're trying to teach me. They're teaching me how to be hard. If you're doing it for exercise purpose, fine. But that's not why we got into karate. And we got into Sanchin being so important because they said all is in Sanchin. Now what does that mean? Why don't we investigate that? Why don't we talk about that? Nope, nobody does. They're just saying, they're taking it by faith. My teacher told me to do it this way, I'll do it that way. I'm, I'm stubborn kind of a guy, and I, I look into everything, and it's taken me many years to do that. And when I got to a point where I started to do the movements where I could, you know, not, not be tense as I went through them, I was building ability to move fast and to hit fast and to hit with power. Hard soft in the beginning to me what meant your body was like an armor coated in coat that you wore. And the, the soft part was the breathing. When you go through a dynamic tension move, movement, it's in, essential that you learn how to breathe. If you don't, you're going to have all kinds of problems. You're going to, you know, I've seen people go through a whole sound chin without breathing. And in some, and it's not just Wei Ji Ru that does that. You see a lot of styles, the only time they breathe is when they punch. It's like a ki -ai. <laughs> And that's their breath. All right? But if you're in Wei Ji and you're doing dynamic tension kata, it's essential that you learn how to breathe. And breathing becomes an important part of that. But if you're doing it the old way, you, your breathing is natural because the hard or the soft is the movement, the accelerated movement. The hard is the hit when you make contact with something or something makes contact with you. Just for that instant, your body will, I don't want to say magical, but your body will react to that punch. And that's why a boxer is able to survive in a match. You go, how long is a boxing match? Three minutes or something? How long is our Sanchin Kata? 15, 20 seconds? And the people <laughs> at the end of the Sanchin are out of breath. All right, a great exercise. And you can do this all of your life. But we join our karate school to learn how to defend ourselves. And we're expecting that through our training, we're going to be able to utilize these moves, these techniques. We, teachers are very creative. They do all kinds of things to, to supplement the training of Weiji. But getting back to the why is Sanchen so important? All is in Sanchen. What's the all? It's the angle of the arm. All of your movements use that angle of the arm. It's learning how to punch, where you don't punch to get a big pop at the end of the, the, the punch, but it's to keep that elbow in until you get to this angle, and then all of a sudden it turns over. All right? Not turning over too soon and then pop, where the elbow pops here, and 10 years later, they're replacing the elbow and the, the shoulder joint. <laughs> all right. The Sanchen should be teaching us all of the good ways of moving. Angle of the leg, so important. All right. The way you step. The angle movements from the Wauki. The Wauki itself is the most important thing with intercepting the movement, grabbing, controlling, counterattacking, but a lot of people misunderstand because they were taught if a punch comes at you here, you've got to do a 360 degree block in order to intercept that punch. But that's not what San Shen should be teaching you. If you're not tense, tension will create that 360 movement that's too slow. In the sense that the teacher, teacher will say, that's because you're not moving fast enough. But that's not it at all. The Wauki is teaching you to intercept that punch, that ac action coming at you, wherever it's happening. And I talk about catching a ball. How many of you 
caught a ball by doing that. All right? The ball comes at you, your arm will go up automatically to catch the ball. And the Wawuki teaches you that, yes, the major movement, the complete movement is done in the kata, but in reality, under stress, and the punch comes at you, that arm will go up to where the action is with this arm angle. It's not going to go up like that. It's going to go up like that because that's what you develop through the performance of your kata over years. All right? Overhead angle, the arm is going to go up like that. So the kata is teaching you all kinds of things, but it's all related to fighting. And if you think of your wagey as an athletic endeavor, it's not magic. How many people go into a karate dojo because they see someone breaking a steel pipe over the guy's head or arm or breaking five baseball bats that there's magic in that? And all I have to do is this weird movement like this, and I'm going to be able to do that. And the sensei reinforces that by punching him so that by tensing the body, he can take a much stronger blow than he could take before that. So that's kind of the magic that he's getting. But in reality, I think that's not what we should be emphasizing in our, in our classes. And most Weiji dojos that I am familiar with don't, don't do that. But on Okinawa, you know, they, how, did, how did all the punching come about and body abuse? It came about because of demonstrations. In a sense, it was like a marketing ploy. People would see that and they would say, wow, that's like magic. And making, making all these things happen, I can do that. But they don't understand. They didn't get that just by doing a kata. They're training. They're, they're, they're strengthening their body. They're doing all kinds of drills to get the arms in that condition. It takes a long time. So that also is part of what you're doing in, in, you know, in a way of self-defense and learning it through your, your kata. I promised my... Uh, my, my students said that I would take them through a, a two, to two kinds of, of kata, and then we're going to play around with some of this. And again, I hope you keep an open mind and, and understand that I'm not saying that dynamic tension kata is bad for you. I'm just saying that you have to be careful as you progress through your training. And if you want to train until you're 85 with no joint replacements, that it's important that you know how to do this correctly. Okay, if Ken and uh, Tim, come on up. And right here. All right. All right, bow. I'm going to start off with the right foot, and you do the kata on your own. Ready? And I'm going to check you too. Ajime. Now again, if their body is in dynamic tension, I can hit them much harder. But I don't want that. I want to feel what the natural strength is. I want to see the rebound action. I want to see how they, and that's why they take the gi top off, so we can see the development of the body. Shoulders down, lats. See the natural strength of that stance, not how he can stand there in, in, in a totally tense situation. All right, ready? On your own. I'll tell you when to turn. Oh, Jimmy. Turn.
And turn any time you want. There you go. And double. Now, I told them to do it the, with dynamic tension, but they've been doing it the other way so long that they just, what I consider to be a very good Weiji Ryu kata, with one with, where it was not being performed overly tense. And I'm going to ask Mr. Justin Testa, who's been around forever, to come up and do an old way sanction. And I'll also test you a little bit too. Ready? Hi. Hi. Hi, Jimmy. Now again, the goal here is to check Justin's natural strength. How, how strong his body is without tensing his whole body. how strong the leg position is in a natural manner. On your own. Hey. Hey. Thank you very much. All right, now I, I was hoping that my two students who did the, 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 the dynamic tension way would have shown that, but they didn't, so they, you know, they weren't out of breath. <laughs> All right, which is the goal of the old way. All right, now what I'm, I'm going to ask all of you to do is sort of line up here in a row, you know, so I can see you all. I guess you can stay where you are, it doesn't matter. But I want you to get into a left sanchen position. And we're going to, get, let me get my watch. You're on, next. All right, we're gonna do a, a shushiwa drill. Normally, if I put together a course, it's a 12-week course, that has you, for each week, doing 15 minutes a day with a, a routine. And at the end of the 12 weeks, you've completed your San Chen, but you also will understand the old way of moving. All right, so that you can apply that to your regular training. Now, you notice the way they were doing Doing the, doing the kata, you didn't see any difference. We're not taking anything away from you by asking you to consider this as a way of training. All we're, we're, we're saying is that if you're doing it for fighting purposes, that this is probably a better way because you're, you're developing the stamina and staying power that's necessary for any athletic endeavor. I don't care what kind of sport it is. Weijiu is not, well, I don't know, what do you call it if it's not an, an athletic activity? So why should we be different than boxing or any other contact or uh, act, active sport? 
And doesn't it make sense to do something that you're going to be able to do when you're 85 years old? Not that a lot of you are worrying about that right now, but it happens. And wouldn't it be nice to train yourself in a way that you're not going to have to have a knee replaced, hip replaced, shoulder replaced in 10 years or 20 years or whatever. And I think after, at some time there will be some studies made on this. And there, people are going to ask questions about, you know, does this work? Is this unique? Is this something that, that is healthful for an individual? And if you're not in the, the, the area of working with a, a coach or a, a teacher who understands all of this, then there's a lot of danger. Anyway, uh, 10 minutes we're going to try today to work on a, 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 the opening movement of San Chin. And I'm going to ask you to look for certain things. Now, for the first minute, two minutes, three minutes, your mind is going to be involved. And you're going to get little jerky movements. All right, but I want you to move very smoothly. And not closing your hands. Closing your hands is associated with that, that kimi, the focus. All right, I just want you to try and move your arms by, so the arms move themselves. All right, and there's no tension, no stress. All right, so just get into that position. Not doing it fast. You're not trying to go for speed here. All you're trying to do is to shut your brain down so that only your body is moving itself. All right, and I'm going to, maybe we'll only do it for five minutes because we're, we're already moving a little faster than I thought we would. All right, keep going. Eyes straight ahead. Clear your mind. Nice, smooth, but make sure it's an accelerated movement. It doesn't have to be fast, but you always must be in acceleration in all movements. Now the tendency will be to, to jerk, and you'll feel tension in your shoulder. I don't want any tension anywhere in your body. And pretty soon your brain's going to get tired of saying, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> pretty soon your brain shuts down. All of a sudden your body is moving itself. Don't squeeze your hand. Just extend out, bring the arm back. Don't lift the arm either. Just these are straight movements. Straight movements. I can tell by watching you when your brain starts turning off, all of a sudden the movement is a flow. It's a flowing movement. It's not a jerky, hard, tense movement. No, it's not this. See, it's the moment you do that, then that's, that's the dynamic tension kicking in. There can be no tension in the shoulder. You can see the hardness. This is hard to get rid of. Just let the movement flow. And it doesn't speed up at the end. It's not this. It's just one steady movement. Is the brain getting bored yet? No, Sensei!
Okay, thank you. Again, this was a brief demonstration. When, it, when, when I first came out with the course, and people were saying, only 15 minutes? 15 minutes is a long time, and that's the purpose of it. Just enough time so your brain tires, and all of a sudden that arm is moving by itself. All right? And this is really the goal of San Chen, is to create muscle memory, brain gets out of it, punch comes at you, the brain doesn't have to activate and say, hey dummy, someone's throwing a punch at you, get that arm out there. Tighten up first though. All right. No, your brain is out of it. If punch comes at you, you're going to rely on the, on the muscle memory of that arm coming up in an action that's going for whatever's coming at you, but in a very powerful movement. As soon as it makes contact, that's when the Kimi kicks in. And part of that course is when you finish the 12 weeks, then you learn the Kimi, the, the focus point of the technique. All right? And as you saw in the kata that my three students performed, the kata looks just the same as you do now, except at the end of the kata, you're not out of breath. I hope that makes sense. Now, I'm, go I'm going to ask uh, Sensei Roy Bedard, who's a PhD in all of the science of what we're talking about, and he's also the closest thing to a professional athlete that I know. Uh, he was in the Pan Am Games on the year that the Olympics was canceled, but was very, he was one of the top fighters of that era. And it's interesting to note how when you move from kata to fighting, how all of a sudden it becomes a different world. How all of a sudden you have to learn all new things. You can't go into a, even a tag match where there's no hard contact. You have to learn new things. You have to new, learn the old way, but most coaches they don't know what I'm just teaching you here. They just keep making you do it until you get so tired that you're, you're going to start moving. All right, you just watch them in the boxing. They hit a heavy bag, the first lesson, they don't last very long. But the longer you train hitting that bag without stopping, the more you learn how to turn off those active dynamic tension actions that are, elimin are limiting your ability to be to be in that boxing ring for five minutes or three minutes or whatever it is. When you're, you're learning, you're going into a, a sparring match, you, you have to learn these, these things that you, your contact should be teaching you. So all I'm saying is give that a, some consideration as you go through your San Chen. Now we talk about different ways of doing kata. That's okay, everybody accepts that. But no one ever talked about this very simple concept of dynamic tension. Muscle movement, movement with a movement, a exercise movement, where you're exercising while you're moving. Kata was not designed to do that, in my estimation. So if you're, if you're doing kata correctly, you should be able to go into a sparring match utilizing your kata. But if you go in there and the first time someone throws a punch at you and your mind kicks in and you get tense, pretty soon you say, I can't use that. And then you start learning sparring in a totally different manner than you learn kata. And it shouldn't be different. It should be one and the same thing. It should be an extension of your kata. And if you ask any fighter, what I'm saying, and this is why I want Roy to talk about it a little, because he went through that. His old teacher pounded the crap out of, out of him. He, he was a student in uh, West Palm Beach, I think it was. And that teacher, you know, he was a good guy, but his understanding of the kata, you know, was grade school uh, understanding. All he did is he did what the teacher in Okinawa showed him how to do, and that's punch the crap out of the student. And so all of the students, including Roy, went through their kata with dynamic tension. 
But when Roy got into the, to the team work of sparring, all of a sudden, all that had to change. So it was like a big wall. Here was kata, karate, and here was reality. And if you don't question yourself, and you don't question this, the process, it'll always be that way. You'll go through life because you're never, most people will never be tested. They're never going to get into a fight. So you won't be in that, that mode where you have, it has to be used. You'll be able to do it any way you want. But if you're punching incorrectly, you're going to have problems with the joints in your arms and the shoulder. If you kick incorrectly, there should always be an angle on that leg when it comes out. The moment it hyperextends, overextends, you're going to have joint problems. All right? But all this should be taught in your kata. This is what a good teacher does. And then when it comes time to spar, they should be utilizing these movements that you learned in your kata. So, Roy, your turn. All right, good morning, everyone. <laughs> we had 40 minutes for the seminar, and I think we're there. So if you'll indulge me just a few minutes, I just want to say a few words to lay sort of a predicate for everything that you heard this morning from Sensei. Um, I think it's important because sometimes, even as, as we try to explain things in more detail, sometimes we can still end up more confused. And sometimes that is the problem. We end up more confused. And I think when you, when you ask yourself, why am I doing this? What's the point of this training? And you heard Sensei say the point is fighting. But that's not a very big point because most of us don't spend our time fighting. We have a society, as a matter of fact, that discourages that. Sometimes when you fight, there are penalties. Sometimes those penalties are extreme. You go to jail. Sometimes they're even more extreme and you die. But he's right. He's right when he says that. And that's because if you understand why fighting is so important, you start to understand the science of this gift that you have, which is your son chin and your forms. You see, the way that we are, the way that we're built, our evolution is dictated by fighting, by survival. There's a lot of things we can do with our body, but our bodies weren't evolved to do merengue or salsa. They were evolved to fight. So the most pure form of human expression is in fighting. So whether you did this accidentally, as a hobby, as a sport, you ended up doing something that is of the highest level of human performance, whether you know it or not. And that's why you do it. We don't fight every day anymore. We've evolved into a society and civilization that doesn't think that that is a good thing to have to fight all the time. But you do other things. And because you do other things, we have now not just life, but we have quality of life. And quality of life matters to all of us. We all should be so lucky to stand up here at 85 and move like Sensei Matson moves and think like Sensei Matson thinks. That's not an accident. That is human performance. And it happens as an expression of years of doing what you're doing. It's, a, it's an unintended consequence for many people. But it's real. And it's real because you have the gift of Sun Chin that is keeping your body as finely tuned as a human body is designed to be, even though you don't think about it like that. It's keeping your mind as highly tuned as your mind is supposed to be, even though you don't think about that. And it's doing it sometimes in spite of yourself, because you keep looking for the details of form. And as you get detailed, you get confused. And as you get more specific about what something's supposed to be, 
you tend to lose sight of the bigger picture. And so the old way is truly an old way. It was something that our forebears knew, and that was that survival expresses into every other area of life. Remember, science is only catching up with what you do. It's a very interesting problem. We are such an old system. Baseball's not old. Football's not old, it's new. Your system is old. If you play baseball all the time, you get better at baseball. If you play football all the time, you become better at football. But if you do karate all the time, you get better at life. It's true, because it's not designed specifically for competition. It's not designed specifically for earning points. It is designed to make you a better person, and everyone who has come before you has said that, maybe in a way that sounded esoteric and not so clear, but, but it's true that the practice of martial arts carries with it a legacy of survival. And survival is pure, and it's, and it's fully formed, or we would not be here. Our ancestors were all survivors, and they survived through very different conditions. But their ability to survive came from their ability to keep their bodies strong, to keep their minds strong. And this is our vehicle for doing that. When you get into the science of the martial arts, here's what we understand. We understand that what we do should transfer to other areas. I spent a lot of time talking about transfer. Today with uh, video games, for example, from a psychological perspective. Are video games helping us? There's these companies like Lumosity that are out there that say, oh, if you do you know, tic-tac-toe and crossword puzzles every day on our machinery, you'll become smarter. You'll be able to do other things as well. Turns out, scientifically, we're not sure that's true. Seems like if you do crosswords all day long, you get really good at crossword puzzles. But you might not become a better speaker. You might not become a better reader. And that's the nature of transfer. In science, the highest gold standard for any human behavior is to get it to transfer to something bigger and greater than the actual task that you're doing. You have two different types of transfer. You have near transfer. If you swing an ax, perhaps you'll be better at baseball. The movements are so similar that perhaps you'll have a better stroke with your bat because all day, every day for your life, you've been swinging an ax. That's near transfer. But will you be better at swimming? where the arm also is in motion, but not exactly the same way. That's far transfer. We don't know. But the gold standard is to find something that far transfers, that makes everything in your life better, that increases the quality of your performance in a broad way. Of course you'll get better at karate if you practice karate. But are you a better person? Are you better at life? Are you more capable of living longer, living pure, thinking better as you age, adjusting with life's demands through the aging process? And the answer is yes. In karate, you actually do that. Baseball players retire. Karate people don't retire. They change. They morph. They express themselves based on what their life is today. And so, don't be surprised if at 18 years old, your son chin looks different than it does at 88. As a matter of fact, every single iteration of your life, your kata has changed. Because your body has changed, and your mind has changed. And kata is adaptable to it because it transfers. Your abductor muscles, your adductor muscles that are working using in science, what we often refer to as reciprocal inhibition, the ability to tighten and to loosen, those are natural processes. You don't have to learn those. Your body has evolved for, for centuries, for eons, to have a perfect balance 
of expressive outward movement and expressive inward movement. And your task through the martial arts is to find that. Now, when you lose sight of it, by doing the kind of things we do today, sit at a desk all day long, not moving around, not exercising, what happens? We lose balance. Certain muscles deteriorate. They atrophy. They wither. And so when you get up at the end of the day of working your hard jobs, what do you have to do? You have to do martial arts because you have to regain balance and express your body in the way that it was intended. So I know that's sort of a, a scattershot approach to trying to bring all this together, and I'll, and I'll wrap it up here. But to say that I think Sensei Matson and I have a bookshelf of books we've never written. I've been fortunate enough to have him in Florida with me, so we spend probably a lot more time cerebrally discussing these things than I have ever done in Weichiru with my former teacher who you heard about. Thank you, that's all. And we've talked about so many of these ideas. And I do have the benefit of a formal modern education that frankly has probably only given me a better vocabulary. Everything I learned in sports psychology, I learned here in the, in the Gi over the years. And now I, I know how to tell you what I learned because I was often confused by what I was doing. As I sat through these classes, I said, oh, that's right. That's right. That's what that means. I've been doing that all along. And you have too. So the old way, I think, with, with George's introduction of this is a, is a real turn on to me because it is starting to bring into the understanding of our style natural processes that have otherwise been forgotten is not the right word, but, not, but unexpressed from teacher to teacher because of the overemphasis on detail. That's what makes you tighten your body. Our system is a very principled system intended to be made practical. But the principles behind what you do are what the old way expresses, not the practical. Sanchin will never look like a street battle. I, I've seen plenty of those. Sanchin will never appear to be a street battle. It will be confusing to outsiders who look at it and say, what is this funny thing you're doing? Oh, I'm learning to fight. Oh, is that right? They will never be able to see through your expression of San Chin that you are working on the most important thing to human performance, which is fighting. But you are because you're working on the principles, the strength, the power, the fluidity, the mental aspects. You are extrinsic at times, intrinsic at times, seeing the fight out there, otherwise focusing on your internal body. You are balancing your muscle systems. You are increasing your blood flow in some respects. You're strengthening the sinewy power of your tendons and ligaments. You are adjusting your frame accordingly to your posture as you go through the aging process, perhaps put on some weight in areas you didn't use to have it, or perhaps take some weight off. Every day, you're fine-tuning for the fight. And that is what the old way is expressing. It's a larger view, a 30,000-foot view of human performance and human movement through something you already know. So that's what I wanted to tell you. I wanted to come out here and tell you that there is a science to what you're doing. It is not just rote expression of human form. There is purpose and meaning that predates us by thousands of years. And our task is to figure out why we're doing these things and to understand and to take pride in the fact that you have, whether accidentally or intentionally, found probably the most perfect expression of human form. So thank you. That's all I have. That's what I'm saying. Uh, just one point. This was designed to be a two section, uh, uh, not course, but a, a seminar. The second set is going to be held this afternoon at 4 30, Justin? 3 45. And that's the supplemental exercises that we found to be really, really good 
to go with, with the, your Weiji training. So don't forget to get go to that seminar. Thank you very, very much, and I, I hope you all understand. I'm not trying to, to say what you're doing is wrong. I'm saying I'm not taking anything away from you. I'm just giving you another way to look at what you're doing. That's important. You don't accept it as a, a cult or religion kind of a thing. It's not. It's an athletic endeavor. All right? And hopefully I'll see you next year. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to Live Dandy.